Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate uh, you for coming here today. And before we start, I want to make a small questionnaire. So no worries, you don't need to answer. Uh, I mean, with, with your voice. Just raise your hands. So if you are a product designer or any kind of designer, please raise your hand. <laughs> nice. Uh, if you are product owner, product manager, OK, nice. And if you are a developer, no matter front end or uh, back end, nice. Thank you so much. So uh, let me introduce myself quickly. I'm a product designer, uh, and I have been designing um, different tools uh, since 2016. And um, curr currently, I'm based in Portugal, in Porto, working at Revolut. Uh, and Revolut, uh, maybe you know, maybe you're not, but uh, I, I can remind you, Revolut is a fin financial app. And uh, this financial app, you can download from App Store or Google Play and start using it. And in Revolut, we have so many designers that are trying to create uh, and to make the experience, the user experience of our main app uh, as much um, great as it's possible. But I'm a bit different designer. So I, uh, I've been designing all my, almost all my career, uh, the internal tools. And I often hear the, an opinion that my job isn't so important. And it makes me cry d d deep into my uh, heart, yeah. But internal tools, nope, are important, yeah. Um, imagine every day we use various tools uh, that help us to do our daily tasks, uh, that help us to be more productive and effective uh, at our work. Um, but we rarely think how important they are for our productivity. So internal tools are important. And first of all, they're important for employees. Uh, so let's take the support, customer support department as an example. Their work directly depends on quality and usability of the tools and programs they interact with every day. Uh, if employees face um, difficulties with finding necessary information or um, fixing errors or finding uh, the functionalities that they need, um, it, can, it can affect not only their mood, but also the efficiency of the whole department. Um, Problems like complexity or non-intuitiveness of the programs, uh, of internal programs, can lead us to each workday, uh, with, starting with frustration and a waste of time. But internal tools are not only just important for employees. They are also important, and even more important, for business. So they uh, they are not just um, a part of in, uh, technical infrastructure of companies. Uh, they also like the regular updates that helps uh, computer system work smoothly, uh, they, then they maintain the work of uh, any business. So they, they make business more efficient. So today, I want to explain you why internal tools are important and how we can create uh, effective and intuitive tools. But First, let's talk about employees. So here is Anna, and she's super experienced support, uh, support specialist. So she's a key person in our uh, support department. She's, she has perfect communication skills. Uh, she, uh, she can find an, uh, an approach to any customer. So as a result, she solves uh, solve uh, problems, customers' problems, almost immediately. But when she comes to, to, of, to the office, she has one big problem. And this problem uh, makes her work days insane. This problem is non-intuitive, sorry, 
<laughs> non-intuitive interfaces. So these interfaces are like this doggy. They smash Anna's high qualification. So she comes to the office, she opens this software, uh, and she spent too much time finding the information that she needs. So as a result, clients uh, are getting less faster replies, so, which they don't like. And, um, and yeah, these internal tools, they are like bridges. Uh, and these bridges should make it easier to go from one side to another. But in this case, uh, these bridges has, ha have too many stairs, too many uh, turns, and long ways around. So getting from one side to the customer's, uh, to the solving solution of customer's problem uh, gets much difficult. But let's imagine if our department, our support department, has um, 30 employees and all of them uh, have the same problem. So they spend 30 extra minutes per day uh, trying to consider with all of these problems. So it, it costs money and it wastes time. Uh, so customers unhappy, employees unhappy, everyone unhappy. But what if our Anna has intuitive interface? She would do more, uh, clients would get faster replies, and uh, business would get would do better. But how, how we can create these in, intuitive, uh, intuitive internal tools? And um, the, first, the first and the most important step is understanding. So we need to delve into the daily routine of employees like Anna. We need to understand how she thinks, how she works, um, what problems she has, what the most pain points. Um, yeah, and to do this, we need to communicate with Anna and employees like, like she. So to understand uh, the problems of people, you need to communicate with them, you just need to chat, you just need to go, uh, if you work, uh, in the office, you can go to these persons and just speak with them about the problems they have. Um, another one step that you can, you can take an, as an action is conduct surveys. Conduct surveys, make some interviews, and even spend the day with the employees uh, observing their work. So um, in one of the previous companies that I worked, uh, sorry, I clicked. Um, I spent the whole day with the supper specialists, just observing their work days, and it gets me um, a lot of insights about their job, about their work, about what's uh, about all of these problems they face every day. So it's really helpful uh, for creation the better uh, from the UX perspective tool. Uh, another key point is prototyping. So you, need, you don't need to spend a lot of time creating the detailed prototype. You should just um, create a quick prototype and let Anna use it, let Anna test it. Uh, you, you don't imagine how, how much information it can bring to you with, uh, with this prototypes testing. So, um, yeah, uh, involve your end users into the development process. So with all of these steps, with uh, understanding users, with uh, 
communication with prototyping and so on, uh, you can involve your users into the uh, development process and it can help you to create uh, the user-friendly interface and it can help uh, your business uh, to, to build successful product. So that's all about involvement. When, when people like Anna, they uh, feel uh, that their opinion are valued and considered, they start to be uh, active participants in the, developments, uh, in, in the development process. So, but some of you can, can ask me or someone else <laughs> what, what we need to do and how we can create these uh, interfaces if we don't have resources. So we don't have budget how we can cre create the intuitive interfaces that help employees uh, work better. And the answer not just uh, like add some buttons and that's all. No, uh, we need to be focused on several things. And the first is, as I covered uh, before, uh, is user-centered design. So involve your employees into the development process. It will help a lot, and it will reduce the cost of the development process because uh, with understanding what they really need, you can avoid unnecessary features, yeah? And you also can avoid unnecessary features with core features prioritizing. So you need to understand what really, uh, what really needed and what uh, people really want and push it to the first place, deal with this, and um, yeah, that's it. So it, uh, involve iterative development, so cr create a quick MVP solution and let employees to test it. Uh, it's really helpful to get an insights and uh, uh, to create a better solution in the, in the next iteration. Uh, if you don't have resources, you can also use open source software. So, for example, it, it, it's, it doesn't mean that you need, to, um, you need to use open using software. You also can use some kind of uh, different open source design system, for example. And you can, uh, you can build uh, these effective internal tools with, with just selection the different components that are able to use for free. Um, you also need to streamline with integrations. So integrate uh, some other tools to, to your internal tool uh, just to um, improve the user experience and without, without any um, necessary like creation of the of the new features, so you can just integrate, for example, Slack, and it will be uh, your uh, like me mes messenger solution, solution for chats. Uh, invest in training and support. So, well, uh, well studied, yeah, uh, people can uh, deal with their daily tasks without, without any struggling because they, will, they, they have all the tutorials, they have the support, and uh, yeah, you don't need to create like, big features uh, to implement because they, can, they, can, they have this help. And the last thing is uh, feedback loops. So, Collect the feedback as, as, as like, regular as you can. Uh, create maybe Slack channels or some alternative uh, channels for gathering feedback because people, uh, people use these tools every day and they have a lot to say. So another one section that I want to cover is that um, sometimes your internal pro product 
can have the potential to go to the external market. So we have a lot of uh, examples on the external market, and one of them is Slack. Initially, Slack was created as an internal tools, tool for a company, for a tiny spec company. It's uh, developing uh, gaming, game developing um, company. And they created uh, this tool for, uh, to facilitate communication between developers. So uh, to, quickly, um, to quickly change uh, like messages, files, and so on. And, and they, was, they were closed. I mean, the, their game wasn't successful. The game is Glitch, named Glitch. So it wasn't successful. And they closed, but they understood they, they have this gold mine with their Slack. So it's really helpful, and uh, people in, inside the company love, this, uh, love it. So they decided to, uh, to go to the public in 2014. So they released, and now they have 20 million daily users. So it's, it's pretty successful story. Another one example is Jira. So yes, Jira is also started as, a, as, in, as an internal tool. And they created their product in 2002. And um, this tool was created for bug tracking uh, and project management uh, at Atlassian. And at the same year, they decided to release to the public. So what made Jira successful on the external market is the flexibility and uh, configuration. So they, it doesn't matter how big the company is, they, can, they all can use Jira. So in 2023, uh, they have uh, 65,000 um, teams around the world in 122 countries. So it's also a pretty successful story. And these two examples are not last. So we, on, the, on the market, we have a lot of examples that, uh, of the product that became external and successful products, uh, but they started as the internal tool. So as you can see, and this is not the ending list of products. But all these famous products, they started as an internal tools. Uh, so if you think that your uh, product has uh, potential to go to the external market, uh, you need to think about uh, several things. So first of all, you need to think how to adapt your tools to the external market. And uh, that's because um, companies on the market are so different, and they have different processes, they have different teams, they have different needs. So you need to adapt it, but how? First of all, you need to gather the feedback from your potential clients. So maybe set up a call, uh, tell them about, uh, about your product, uh, and collect the feedback, collect the need, needs of, uh, of the clients like you did for your, extern, uh, for your internal um, employees. The next one thing um, is flexible adaptation. So as I mentioned uh, in the example of uh, Jira, uh, they created a flexible tool. So any team, any company, uh, could um, adapt it for them, their needs. So you have to, you have to create the configurable, uh, configurable app. Uh, the third thing is testing. So let's m maybe create the, some sort of uh, test environment or something like that and let people uh, test it. Uh, so yeah, you, you, can, you can do A-B testing with, uh, with your external clients and it will help you to collect the feedback and create better solution for them. Um, another one is training. 
So you need to pre you need to prepare your users, your potential users, uh, for using your platform. So invest in training in support materials because the new user that purchased your product and started to use it need these uh, guides. Uh, no matter how intuitive your product is, they need to uh, they need to they need th this help with using these products. And the last thing is, uh, remember Anna, your employees that help you to create the internal tools within, the, within the, your company, they can also help to build the external tool because they have these communities. Like for example, in, in terms of uh, Anna, uh, she is a support specialist, so she has the community of support specialists. So she can gather the feedback from, this com uh, from these communities. She can uh, understand what real needs they have, and she can bring this feedback to you. So communicate with your employees. And uh, the last thing that I wanted to mention, um, I, I mean, I want you to remember that internal tools are really important. And um, sometimes something really small within your company can, can start to be a big and uh, to go to the external market. So designer, uh, design internal tools with care today, they shape tomorrow's success. So to be honest, that's it. Thank you so much. I'm ready for questions. OK. Oh. Uh, hello. Hi. Thank you, Ilya, for your uh, presentation. It was, uh, it was very interesting. Um, I have a question for you as a designer of yeah. internal tools. Okay. How do you do um, competitor research, given that many internal tools in different companies, they're like closed, so you can't see them? Like you can't yeah. see the screenshots. So how do you, how do you research? Um, so uh, to be honest, sometimes I use ChatGPT. <laughs> And it's it's really helpful. It it can analyze uh, this product based on different topics, uh, different articles within the internet. So uh, you can really create the picture in your head using this uh, AI. Um, I also try to find any screenshots within the within the internet and to compare to understand. Uh, for example. Uh, if we are talking about several uh, products, I can create the metrics of the um, of the features. So um, I highlight these like not not so good points in in my opinion, of course, um, and I'm trying to compare them. Yeah, so it's pretty simple answer: Google and ChatGPT. <laughs> yeah. Thank Anyone you. else? Thank you. I also have a question. Yes. Please. So I I if it's not a secret, could you please share how does your internal tool uh, dev team looks like? So they have a great designer, as we understood, but who else? <laughs> who else? Uh, so currently we work um, on the internal tool in Revolut. Yeah. And we have, so I, I work on the HR tool. And it has several sections, several sub apps inside. Uh, so I cannot do it by myself. Yeah, uh, we have three designers, uh, except me, um, and also products. Uh, so our team, our development team, is split by several sub teams with their own product owners, uh, uh, product managers with developers, front-end developers, back-end developers, and uh, each designer assigned to this sub-team. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm creating the performance part of the HR tool. So this is the part where we track performance of the employees and conduct surveys, create the performance reviews, and so on. Yeah. So, but I'm trying to create the philosophy where each the developer can come to me and discuss the design and suggest the ideas. So yeah, 
we all work on this. Okay, first, thank you for presentation. And thank you so much. say development and design of internal tools is uh, very specific and interesting. Maybe could you trust us and share with us some kind of uh, specific metrics, how you measure your own personal success and how you do that for your team? Um, okay, yeah, we, we, we have, uh, we have it, a lot of internal channel, channels, yeah, uh, to collect the feedback, uh, to collect the, um, to understand if our users, our internal employees, uh, like it or not. Uh, so we use Slack, we use uh, some questionnaires, some surveys, and uh, we have operation managers that collect uh, the metrics for us about their, um, like, some kind of enjoyment, yeah, and enjoyment me metric of the product. So, yeah, like this. Or you can make a call with the, with the user. Uh, so what I like most about the internal products is that your, your user in front of you, you can go to them and you collect the feedback, you can understand what they like, what they don't like in your product. So, so yeah, a lot of different channels. Thank you for your question. Thank you for your presentation. I have a question according to uh, some no-code tool. Did you try to implement some no-code platform because it's uh, most helpful, I think, for users and it's uh, more fast because if you need some features, you request to your team, by, but you can provide uh, for your internal users way how they can automate, uh, automatize their activities. Did you think about this? Yeah, uh, thank you so much for your question and suggestion at the same time. Uh, because I haven't tried to implement this. And I haven't tried to suggest this, but yeah, thank you so much. We can talk about after after the speech. Yeah. So, any other question? Okay, so I have one. Yes, um, please. Uh, uh, why don't you just use some other tools? For example, if you have support guys. You yeah. have support systems. Yeah. If you have, have cell team, you have a CRM system. Yeah. Why don't you just use already existing system with great UI, mm -hmm. great UX, and very flexible? Um, thank you. First of all, thank you for your question. It is a, it is a great one. And um, as I told you before, each company has their own processes. Their, they have their own like different teams, different, different departments, and so on. And sometimes uh, these tools that are on the external market, they are specific for some kind of users, yeah? And um, in terms of big companies, it's, it can be difficult to implement like some external solution. So they start building the, their own. Because the, uh, this, um, the most configurable thing, thing yeah. Um, yes, of course. They uh, these in external tools they have uh, the great UX, the great UI, but sometimes it's not enough. So. Okay. Thank you. So. Uh, oh, another question. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I have a question regarding this shift, like from internal product to the market product. Yeah. Um, like, I've seen couple of times the situation when we say that something works really great inside our company yeah. and uh, we want to make it public and uh, yeah we want to make it like normal like conduct interviews and stuff like this but how like do you maybe have some advices on be or best practices how do you overcome this feeling that we already know everything better that we already know how everything should be and we just don't want to adapt to a new market maybe like I don't know hiring some external consultant or something like this maybe uh, listen your potential users. So, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's easy to. First of all, thank you, <laughs> thank you for your question. Uh, it's it's pretty simple to to just like uh, 
to, to just the, to release this product into the external market and uh, think that uh, oh okay we we are good with this product we use uh, this tool inside and everything works well so uh, everything's great but uh, there the reality can be different so you you need to speak with your potential clients so if you have some uh, some potential clients reach out to them speak. Uh, maybe pitch your your product, uh, show the functionality, and uh, you will see a lot of people, a lot of different opinions and problems. So, yeah, yeah, that's what actually why I asked because sometimes hypothesis testing could be hard. Like uh, we, like sometimes we have several controversial opinions, mm -hmm. and uh, like sometimes you have. To make a decision, let's say between two two potential like hypotheses that you're gonna implement later. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, like maybe in this case, you could do something inside your team, like to overcome your bias. If you worked like lots of time before on this feature, so you already have your own like you know bias towards this, maybe you could do something to this. Uh, so you mean when you have uh, when you have two options of. Yeah, yeah, let, yeah, let's say like uh, yeah, of two course. versions of feature and you need to choose one. And yeah. uh, you have, of course, your previous background, which kind of worked or something new that you might try that might work. In this yeah, yeah, you can test these uh, options by using A-B testing. So you can create uh, two user groups and release one feature, one option of this feature to one group and another one to the, the next one and compare the results. So it will help you to understand what feature is better and release it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, sorry, just a follow-up question related yeah. to that one. Um, so I was just wondering, how, how, how does it work when um, some processes are specific for your company, right? But you mm -hmm. want to make this product external. For yeah. example, your company doesn't have the performance grades but yeah. another company does yeah. have it. So how do you go about it? You release several versions of the product or we customize it per customer? Or how does it work? Thank you so much for your question. Um, create settings. <laughs> this is the pretty, pretty much simple answer. Create settings that can be configurable for each um, company. Not for each, but maybe collect the feedback, understand that what's solutions i mean what problems uh, you have on the external market yeah um, select some of the most important and implement it in into your external version of your product so yes that's right okay i think we we end with questions <laughs> so uh let's say thank you to Ilya. thank you so much <laughs>